Sometimes we want to repeat an action a number of times. For example, let's imagine we want to display hello world five times on the console. The poor way of doing that is like this. So console.log hello world and then repeat it five times. This code is ugly. There is a better way to achieve the same result and that's where we use loops. In JavaScript, we have various kinds of loops and all these loops essentially do the same thing. They repeat an action a number of times. We have for loops, while loops, do while loops, for in loops, and for of loops. All these loops essentially do the same thing. But there is a subtle difference between how they start and end. Let's start by looking at the for loop. So back to this code. This is how we write a for loop. So for, we add parentheses. Now here we need three statements. The first statement is what we call the initial expression. And here we declare and initialize a variable. So we use let to declare a variable like i and set it to zero. Now i is short for index and is a common convention to use in for loops. This is what we call the loop variable. So we initialize it to zero. Then we terminate this statement with a semicolon. Now the second part of the for loop is what we call a condition. So here we want to add a condition and compare the value of i with something else. This loop will run as long as this condition evaluates to true. So if we want this loop to run five times, we compare i with five. So as long as i is less than five, this loop will execute. You will see that in a second. Once again, we terminate this statement with a semicolon. And finally, the third part. This is what we call increment expression. And quite often, what we have here is something like this. So we use the increment operator to increment the value of i with 1. Now, after this for statement, we can add one or more statements, just like the if statements. If you have multiple statements here, we need to put them in a code block like this. Now here, we want to display hello world on the console. So our statement is console.log hello world. So instead of repeating this line five times, we put it in a for loop and this loop will run five times. Now save the changes. So we get five hello world messages on the console. All right, now that you have seen a for loop in action, let's see exactly how this loop works. So earlier I told you this is what we call an initial expression. Here we're initializing i to zero. Now this loop will execute as long as this condition is true. So as long as i is less than five, the statements we have here will be executed. Now, after the first iteration, i is incremented by one. Then this condition is evaluated again. So one is less than five. So one more time, this loop is executed. So we have the second iteration now, after the second iteration, once again, i is incremented by one. So now we are in the third iteration. Again, this condition is evaluated. And because it is true, the loop is executed. To show you this in action, I'm going to output i on the console. So save the changes. This is what we get. So note that in the first iteration, i is zero. Then it's incremented by one until it reaches four. So at the end of fifth iteration, i will be 4. And when we increment that by 1, it will be 5. So this condition will evaluate to false. So essentially, there are two ways to repeat an action a number of times using the for loop. Let's say we want to repeat something five times. We can initialize i to 0 and check to see if it's less than 5. Alternatively, we can initialize this to 1 and check to see if it's less than or equal to five. Now, if you save the changes, you can see i starts from one and finishes at five. Now we can make this program a bit more interesting. Let's say we want to display the odd numbers between one to five. So instead of logging hello world on the console, we can have an if statement and check the remainder of the division of i by two. So if the remainder of division of i by 2 is not 0, that means i is an odd number. 
So we can display it on the console. Save the changes. So here are the odd numbers between one to five. There is also another way to write this loop. Instead of starting from one and going all the way up to five, we can start from five and go back to one. So we change the initial expression, set i to five. As long as i is greater than or equal to one, now we want to decrement i. Save the changes. Now we get the odd numbers in the reverse order. Now it's more common to use the previous form. So we initialize i to zero or one and increment it in every iteration. But in certain problems, you want to use a for loop in the reverse order. Hi guys, thank you for watching my JavaScript tutorial. This tutorial is part of my JavaScript course where you will learn all the essential JavaScript features that every web and mobile application developer must know. If you're an absolute beginner or have some experience in JavaScript and are looking for a fun and in-depth course that teaches you the fundamentals of JavaScript, this course is for you. This course is also packed with tons of exercises that help you master what you learned in the course. In fact, many of these exercises are questions that come up in technical programming interviews. So if you're pursuing a job as a front-end or a back-end developer, or if you simply want to have a more in-depth understanding of JavaScript, I highly encourage you to enroll in the course. For a limited time, you can get this course with a discount using the link in the video description. Click the link to find out more about the course and enroll.